Well, hello there. there and welcome to another episode of Guitar Chat with attorney Stephen Rubin. I'm attorney Stephen Rubin, a business nonprofit and tax attorney in Santa Monica, California. So hello and thanks for joining us uh, for this episode of Guitar Chat. I thought for this episode I would explore something that I've never figured out even to this day and is why did I start to play guitar? And how did I have this, where did this love affair with the guitar and all things guitar related come from? And the truth is, I'll never know. I touched briefly, I think, in one of the first episodes of Guitar Chat. Uh, the following story, it, my older brother had gotten a guitar for his uh, bar mitzvah. And to put it mildly, he didn't really take to it. Uh, I have an image in my mind I'll never forget when he was... Uh, sitting at the piano on the bench facing the other away from the piano because he was playing the guitar and the music was in front of him and his teacher sitting next to him and i don't know I, he looked like the most bored human being or certainly like he was being tortured or something he did not want to be there and i'll that indelible image will be in my mind forever well two years a little he was about two years older than me and about two years later i'll never know what drew me to the corner of the room where the guitar had been sitting for about two years, just covered in dust, never been touched. And truly, I, I don't know and probably never will know why I picked it up one day. And he had one music book, my older brother. He had one music book that I believe he had gotten with the guitar as a gift. And it was the only music book he ever had because his love affair with the guitar, uh, such as it is, didn't last very long. And there was no need to get any other music books but I opened up that music book and for those of you who don't play guitar you're not familiar with they come with these little uh, squares that have a little like this much of the fingerboard here and so they'll have a little rectangle with the strings going across and they'll have little black dots over the strings that you're supposed to press down so if there's a black dot here you'll know to press down this string on this fret these are called frets and depending on where the black dots are, you put your fingers there, right? And you strum down and hopefully, uh, with a little practice, you're making a chord, in this case, an E chord. Or maybe you're making an A chord. Not an A corn, an A chord, or maybe a D chord. Some of the basic chords that you learn. So you don't even have to know music or know how to read music or know anything about music, not that it hurts. Um, but I opened up that book and I found a song I knew. And I started to practice where to put my finger on the fretboard uh, based on those diagrams, not knowing one note from the other. But I did know the song and I did have the ability to put my finger on the frets in those places. And I sat down and taught myself this song. So I'm gonna play it for you, maybe, just maybe some of you have heard of this song. Left a good job in the city Glory. 
As fate would have it, that was the song that I opened up to, or maybe it was the only one I felt I knew enough to try. That is the very first song I learned how to play almost, wow, almost 50 years ago. Holy mackerel. That's a holy mackerel. Um, John Fogarty, Creedence Clearwater Revival, Proud Mary. Well, the story didn't end there. Uh, my mother, my biological mother, had four boys, and uh, she loved to sing. I think she sang through high school and college and the choir and that sort of thing. Had a very lovely voice, and but none of her sons, at least until that moment, to her awareness, had any of her musical gifts and talents. Well, I was really stoked after I taught myself that song. And I, it's been too long. I don't remember how long I had to practice it. Maybe I took a day or two or a week. Maybe not. I don't remember. And uh, little old Stevie boy was going to let Mama know. Look what he had learned how to do. And um, I took my older brother's guitar and that songbook into the kitchen, which is where I found her. And... She was, it was kind of a big kitchen, and she was towards one end at the sink, preparing a meal or doing something there. And on this side, as you walked in, was a little stool, step stool, and a little cubby hole for it. And without announcing my arrival, I just walked into the, that end of the kitchen over here. Now remember, she's over there at the sink, doesn't see me walk in. And I sit on the top of the two-step step stool, put that guitar in my lap. I must have had that book open somehow, somewhere. You know, for all I know, I had memorized the song by then. And I start to play, with no announcement, I start to play Proud Mary. Well, I sense my mother's shock. She just kind of, I could see her freeze up a little <laughs> as she heard me start to play and sing and probably thought to herself, who and what is that? And frankly, I do remember that instant, that moment, and I don't remember really what happened next. It's been too long, but I will always cherish that memory of her um, at the sink and me crawling into the kitchen there with my older brother's guitar and launching into Proud Mary. And uh, I've never stopped. The music never stopped. The love affair with the guitar and uh, guitar playing and guitar music. Well, I'd like to share with you a couple more things then that I remember um, about my mother and, and all of that. I remember at one point I said to mom, uh, mom, I, 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 I wanted some records. I was getting older and I felt it was time to have some vinyl. And I own no records, so I'm about, I don't know, 13-ish, 14-ish maybe back then, and dispatched her to the local music store. I have no idea where she went to get some records. And I must, I, th I think I mentioned to her, you know, she of course asked me, what should I buy? And I must have said, well, Eric Clapton, because in the early 70s, the very early 70s, if you're learning to play guitar, you know, got it by Eric Clapton. 
and I must have told her to buy Donovan. And sure enough, like the wonderful mom that she was, she came back and she had a beautiful double album. I think just one album, a beautiful double album of Clapton's, I forget which one. And two records, two LPs by Donovan, uh, Sunshine Superman and Hurdy Gurdy Man and all that. And it was magic. I, we had a record player and I put them in. These are my own records. I had the beginning of my own vinyl collection. That's like, you know, a rite of passage. You're becoming a man of sorts, a music man of sorts. And uh, I just, oh, I just fell in love with all that. And then another indelible memory I have of my mother was, so I playing my brother's, this is a beautiful Martin guitar. I forget the exact model number. Look at that baby, huh? Right? Uh, but back then, as I was just getting started, and I, my brother had a nylon string guitar, a beautiful classical guitar. Classical guitars are beautiful, they're wonderful, but of course I was listening to Clapton and, and Donovan and Crosby, Stills and Nash, and they're all playing steel strings, steel string guitars, right? Chimey! can't do chimey on a nylon string guitar. I don't care how good you are. I don't care if you're Segovia or, or uh, any of those guys, right? You just, not even Segovia can make a nylon string guitar chimey. And um, so I was bound and determined to get a steel string guitar, or what I thought of as a real guitar. I was a neophyte back then. And sure enough, my mother took me to a Back then, so this is about 1971-ish, two-ish, I'm guessing, somewhere there. I don't think there was, at least I wasn't aware of a guitar store, a music store. I don't even know if Guitar Center was on Hollywood or Sunset Boulevard back then. Maybe it was. Um, but I wasn't aware of any guitar shops. Apparently you bought guitars back then at the same, pla same place. You might buy a, a, a dishwasher or a... Uh, home appliance and all kinds of stuff. But the one little part of the store, like this department store, I mean, not, you know, it was, it was 15 by 15 feet, maybe. 10 by 15 feet was the music part. The music part had a few guitars, what, a few other musical instruments, you know, it was nothing. Well, I, uh, all I remember is we identified a Yamaha steel string guitar. And it was when you're, just learning to play and uh, you're about 13 or 14 and it's new and it comes in a plush case it's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen right it's it's a Stradivarius for all intents and purposes well we identify one and it's time to pay for it and this is how long ago this was how young I was I think it was hundred and twenty dollars which to me was an unimaginable amount of money at the time, and my mother peeled out, I think it was six $20 bills, put them right on the table, one, two, three, four, right next to each other, and I mean, I'm looking at this, I'm already kind of dizzy from just the notion that I'm about to get my own brand new Yamaha shiny super steel string guitar, but my mother's got, you know, like she won the lottery, $120 cash, cold hard cash on the counter there, Boy, I still remember it to, to this day. It was just a, it was an amazing experience. Uh, but that's another wonderful thing that my mom, my mom did for me as I got started in my career and my love affair with the guitar. And I would just maybe like to share one more uh, little anecdote from my humble beginnings as a guitar player, guitar lover. Uh, my old, I had a cousin, I have a cousin, I haven't spoken to him in a while, to put it mildly, Bob. And Bob was the oldest, my mother had a twin sister, an identical twin sister, and my mom had four children, and my aunt had four children, my aunt and uncle, and Bob was the oldest, and he was even older than my older brother, he was, you know, so he's a big man. And Bob, among, you know, not only did he drive a car, holy mackerel, drove his own car, but he had his own record collection. I mean, a real record collection with like boxes of records. 
And um, one day when I was visiting them out in, the, I think, Palos Verdes Rolling Hills area, I think that's where they were living at the time, and Bob was in his room, and I don't know what I was doing in there. I think I was probably letting Bob know I'm getting into guitar, and I knew Bob had records and knew a lot about music, a lot more than I did, and I was asking him for some advice, who to go listen to. What should I, you know, I'm trying to play. I think I told him, ooh, I want to be like Eric Clapton. I want to be able to play those, play like that, that kind of blues rock. And he grabs this, he, he flips through his box, and he pulls out a record, and he throws it on the bed. He says, you should listen to this. I think you really like this guy. Well, who was this guy? Turns out that that was the first time I'd ever laid eyes on what would become my favorite record of all time, the Allman Brothers Live at Fillmore East, recorded in 1971, shortly before the death of my idol, uh, Dwayne Allman. The, <laughs> there's not enough superlatives for this guy here about Dwayne Allman, the greatest slide guitar playing I've ever heard. Um, and sure enough, I, I think he, let, he may have let me take it. I think he may have let me take that record very generous, and I just gave it a few spins, and I, I had found my, I guess at the time, my reason for being, and that was to chase this sound in every way I could. Um, and a funny story about that is, as I was falling in, with the, falling in love with the Allman Brothers, is I, I don't think I fully had in, grasped that they had two lead guitar players. They had two guitar players who both played lead, the great Dwayne Allman and the also great... Dickie Betts, and, uh, but I don't think I knew it. I just think it was just the Allman Brothers and a guy named Dwayne Allman was playing all the guitar. And as I listened and listened and listened over the years, thinking I'm learning how to play and steal licks from Dwayne Allman, I would only later realize, no, Stevie boy, and those weren't Dwayne's licks you're copying. Those were Dickie Betts' licks. <laughs> uh, so as much as I love Dwayne Allman, and it's hard to, uh, for me to uh, overstate that, the guy I think I really ended up trying to uh, assimilate the most and steal from the most was the great Dickie Betts. Um, anyway, before we finish this episode of Guitar Chat, I thought in honor of Proud Mary and Creedence Clearwater Revival being the first song and artist I ever covered, I would try to cover right now for you one more song. Something about having ever, have you ever seen the rain? Someone told me long ago There's a calm before a storm I know It's been coming for some Wow. 
John Fogarty in Creedence Clearwater Revival, and thank you for watching this episode of Guitar Chat. It was great to have you along, and I hope to see you next time.